Good afternoon. I'm Pastor Matthew Worrell from Grace Christian Fellowship here in Winchester, New Hampshire. And I have a couple of th thoughts I'd like to share with you this afternoon. You see, as we're coming into this uh, political season in our country, uh, there's it's just so much discontent and unrest that is happening, and the battle that's happening between uh, Republicans, Democrats, uh, capitalism, socialism, uh, all of that stuff. And we get so focused on these things, and we forget the fact that God in His Word is very, very clear that He's the one that supplies all of our need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I was raised by a mother that instilled a work ethic in all of us kids. Uh, my father died when I was three years old. My mom raised all of us, uh, uh, basically, really, without a man. And, uh, and she worked. She worked hard. Sometimes there were two, three jobs that she would work. And, uh, and she believed in providing the needs for her family. And, uh, and she was a Christian. She loved the Lord and, and uh, believed that God would help her uh, do all of that. And he did. And you know what Jesus tells us in his word. He says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 8. He says, therefore do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of before you even ask. God already knows exactly what you need. He says... Also in verse 33, he says, Be, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will, will worry about its own things. Sufficient in the day is its own trouble. What are we really seeking after? I realize that our country has, is in dire straits and it is in need of a fix, but what are we really focused on? Are we really seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? And trusting God, as he says in his word here, that, he, that all of these things that we need will be added unto us. You know, Paul said to the Philippian church something very, very uh, profound. He said, not that I speak in regard of need, for I have learned whatever state I am to be content. I know how to abase, be abased, and I know how to abound, whatever <clears throat> everywhere in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, Christ is the one who strengthens us. He's the one that provides all of our need according to his riches. That's what it says here. You know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He's... It's not that we look to the government uh, in whatever fashion of government to be the need provider. We look to the Lord. He's the one that provides all of our need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And Paul said to uh, Timothy, he said, Now godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. I, and having food and clothing, with these things, we shall be content. There's that word again, content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Again, who are we looking to for our provision? God is very clear that he will provide all of our need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I, I, can't, I can't stress that enough. That we, There's so much discontent that's happening in our, in our society, in our country, and even discontent that's happening in the church. Because... You know, we, we look at others who are doing very, very well, and we look at ourselves and we don't seem like we're doing very well at all compared to them. So we need a distribution of wealth in this country in order to make it more fair. You know, I don't see anything here in the scriptures that talks about fairness, but I do see in the scriptures a contentedness that we are to have right where we're at. You see, every single one of us uh, really, really are rich compared to the uh, uh, economic structures of this world. You know, I ha uh, we, we have a house, we have a place to live, uh, most of us have a vehicle, uh, we have food, 
uh, we have heat, uh, especially here in the Northeast, that's, that's important with the heating season coming up. We have all that we need. Why do we have to, to strive for more and more and more? You see, God is very, very clear in his word how we are to really uh, be content right where we're at. Uh, Hebrews says, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? <laughs> the Lord is with me. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. How more rich do you want to be? How more rich do I want to be than to understand that God is with me and he supplies all of my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ loves me with an everlasting love and he tells me here, be content with such things as you have. Don't strive for more. Be content with what you have. Why? Because he said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. How more rich can you be than to be a person who has the living God dwelling right within your heart and walking with you through this life? That is the best provision that anyone could ever ask for. And I thank the Lord Jesus Christ that he has given me all that I need. I don't need anything else. The thing that I need mostly is I need him and him alone. God bless you.